In addition to creating a means of casting teeth, Edward Pissing also developed, uh, well, he really had a penchant for putting holes in people's bottles. So you'd have a bottle like this uh, with an open top, maybe a beaker if you like chemistry, and uh, you put some purple fluid in it. And so that fluid's like here or something. And the, uh, <clears throat> well, Edward com would come by and put a hole in it right here. And he'd be like, and there's this little hole and the purple fluid would shoot out the hole, right? So the question is then how fast, how fast would that fluid be going? And this is going to lead us to Torricelli's law because Edward couldn't solve the problem. He could only create it. So this guy Torricelli comes along. I think he was Italian and he found a means to determine the speed of the exiting water. And you'll like it. It's a very interesting problem. So first, let's say up at the top, we're going to call this location one. So we know P1 is the pressure of the atmosphere because this sucker is open to the atmosphere. And then we know that P down here, we're going to call this location two. Now, this is an interesting thing. Maybe I don't want to say anything about this yet, but would you agree that if this is a small hole that it's the speed here, V2, is what we're trying to find, but the speed here is significant, and the speed of the top of the water is going to be very low compared to this speed coming out right here. So I'm actually going to argue that the speed up here at location one is zero. This water is not moving down any appreciable amount. And then we also have to define this height here. Let's call it H. That's the height difference between the water level and the hole. And so we've got some rho GH stuff going on. So we're gonna apply Bernoulli's equation. Now Bernoulli tells us that the pressure at location one plus one half the density, and of course it's just water, so it's all gonna be the same density in all these equations, um, times the speed at one plus the density times baby G times the height at one. Let's put up a little, um, little scale over here. We could call this zero and we could call this y two and we could call this y one. All right. So what I'm going to say is that, uh, well, you know, maybe we can make it even simpler. If we call y two, let's call that zero actually and say that is not important to us. So I'm gonna say that the gravitational potential energy of this water is zero, and it'll make it a little bit simpler for us. It's like choosing the uh, perspective for a problem. We do that all the time. So for location one, I'm gonna say that this stuff simplifies because the velocity is zero to just P1 plus rho G Y1. It's got only gravitational potential energy when the water is up here. But what about P2? We'll solve that and then set these suckers equal to each other because energy is conserved. So at location two, we've got P2 plus one half the density times V2 square plus the density times baby G times the location of two. Wait a second. Well, the location of two, we just called zero. So under here, I can write P2 plus one half rho v2 square. Now that's where the magic happens. I want you to agree that this is the statement of the energy of the system with the water up here. When the water's down here, it's moving, but it's shooting out here and it's at a height of zero. So the only thing we need to do further is identify what the, uh, you know, P1 is an atmospheric pressure, right? What is the pressure at this location right here? And my argument is that just inside and just outside, maybe just outside is where I'm most interested, just outside the pressure is the atmospheric pressure. So I can say that this is atmospheric pressure and I can say that that's atmospheric pressure. Let's circle all our atmospheric pressures in pink and block them in. Here's an atmospheric pressure, here's an atmospheric pressure. So I'm gonna write this down again. This is atmospheric pressure plus one half rho times the speed square. And then I'm gonna take this equation here and I'm gonna bring it down there. And I'm gonna write that that's atmospheric pressure plus rho g h. Y1 is equal to h, okay? Now, get a different color pen. 
let's say it's gray, the color of death and decay. So then, uh-oh. What else cancels? Row cancels. Holy cow, did you see that? That row canceled also? Look what we have left here. Look what we have left here. This is 2GH, and I guess to get V2, I better scroot both sides. It's screwed 2GH. This water is leaving at the same speed as it would have as if you took a little packet of water and dropped it by some height H. It's as if it's in free fall. It's pouring out of a pissing bottle and it's as if it's in free fall. Ding. Not only is this beautiful and very similar to other things that you've seen, but what if Edward had come over and he had made, he had made a pissing bottle like this? What if it came out like that? Uh-huh, yep. And then the rest of the tube went up like that. And uh, you want to put some brown liquid in this one? Sure, because it's a purple container. Sounds great. And then uh, suddenly, well, well, the water would shoot out. And guess how high it would go? If it's going at root 2GH, you want to guess how high it's going to go? It's going to go exactly, now that it's a projectile, exactly as high as the water level originally. It'll shoot out there and go to exactly the same height because energy is conserved. It is as if projectile motion is happening down here because it shoots up to the same level. I really like Torricelli's Law. You guys feel pretty good about that? I like it. T two R's. Torricelli's Law. Which is pretty dang awesome. My Italians, any Italians watching this video, you guys like this law? I like it too.